And uh, this really is a celebration of uh, India's achievement in space exploration, particularly our brilliant women scientists. And firstly, let's of course give Team ISRO and India as well a, a huge applause for Chandrayaan 3's success. They are our space heroes. And today we have the privilege of having uh, two of India's top women scientists who are poised again to make uh, space history, if I may say so, uh, with the Aditya L1 mission, which is India's first mission to explore the sun. Uh, both of these scientists have uh, overcome tremendous gender biases and uh, patriarchal resistance to reach the top of their respective positions. Let's give them a very warm round of applause for that as well. Uh, joining me on the extreme left is uh, Nigar Shaji, a, a top ISDO scientist and the project director of Aditya Solar Mission. And we have, of course, Professor Anapurni Subramaniam, director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Both of them are linked in, uh, intimately with uh, uh, the Aditya project. Uh, Nigar for sending up the uh, spacecraft right up to this uh, tremendous distance. And Anapurni for designing the various experiments that will bring back this. Of course, you're also involved. But let's begin. You just had a review meeting, I'm told, this morning. You'll had a Zoom meeting on Aditya and the progress. Can you give us an update? Aditya was launched last month. Where is Aditya, the spacecraft, reached in terms of the distance? And what more needs to be done? Yeah. Mm. After the successful uh, soft landing of Chandrayaan-3, Aditya L1, we had the launch on September 2nd. And following that, we had our orbitizing manoeuvres, and that is completed successfully. And it's, uh, on September 18th, it left the uh, sphere of influence of the Earth. And now, presently, it's at uh, 10, around 10 lakh kilometers. Which is so that's 1 million kilometers, right? The distance from uh, here to the moon is about 300, uh, 400,000 kilo kilometers, 4 lakh kilometers. Yes. So you've crossed. Yes. well beyond the moon and now yes. you now we are at uh, we are just uh, uh, orbiting around the sun we are totally from the influence of the earth so because around 9.2 lakh kilometer will be totally out of the influence of the earth what is the speed it's traveling at when you uh, is it uh, about it 11 kilometers per second or yeah, higher that's because the, it varies depends on the orbital position so average you can say so the speed that they're traveling it is that if you took a flight from Europe to, from uh, say Berlin to New York, you'd reach there in about five minutes. Is that the speed you're traveling? <laughs> yeah, That's just yeah. to give you an idea of that speed, yeah. right? Yeah. And you are now going to reach, when will you reach the point where you can begin your observation? Which date is that? Yeah, we have uh, uh, two more uh, course correction manuals. And by January 1st week, we'll be in a position to insert into the halo orbit around the Sun at the uh, Lagrangian point. So the Lagrange point is where it will be 1.5 million kilometers away? Yes. That's 1% the distance to yeah. the sun, right? Yes. The sun yes. is like yes. uh, 150 million kilometers. Yes. But that point allows you to stay stationary and observe the sun uh, without untrammeled observations, yes. without yes. the solar you, eclipse and lunar actually, eclipse. Actually, the point uh, rotates along with the Earth. So we'll be continuously we'll be able to view the sun on the other side. So that's a very vantage point for the sun observation. Now let's come to you, Anupulni Subramaniam. You have, uh, you know, designer of one of the key experiments. Let's ask an ABC question. Why should we be studying the sun? I mean, we've had 20 missions in the past before Aditya went up and USA and Germany and others have dominated. But what's, firstly, why should we look at the sun? Why, what will the sun tell us? Yeah, so um, I come from the Indian Institute of Astrophysics and we have the huge heritage of studying the sun for more than 100 years. Oh, so we okay. have this famous Kodaikanal Solar Observatory, which is established in 1899, and we have been observing the sun from 1904 onwards. So what and makes Aditya yeah, so special? So that's what I'm saying. So we see, look at the sun, that's the star we live with. And we need to understand it, we need to understand its tantrums, because we do see the uh, coronal mass ejections from sun and the magnetic field activities of the sun. So the activity is of the time scale of 11-year cycle. So you need to have multiples of 11 years to actually understand what the sun, sun, solar cycle means. So it sort of flips 11 yeah, years. That's yeah. right. Hmm. So 
uh, in, in, in fact, it becomes 22, right? So right. you need to have multiples of the to understand. So we already have more than 100 years of data, and we have been collecting it and studying the sun. Now, what else do you want to do now, right? So if you have seen total solar eclipses, people go take experiments to do total solar eclipses, right? Why do you want to do that? Because sun has got a corona. And corona is where you actually see the coronal mass ejections come and the way in which the matter flies out to the interplanetary space, including the Earth. So if you want to see the corona, you have to actually cut out the light of the solar disk. Okay. And that's when you actually get to do the experiment. Now you have to wait for a total solar eclipse to happen, okay, right. to do that, right? But can, if, what if, if you can actually make a total solar eclipse inside your instrument? And you can do it all the time. Right. So that is what the thing is. And why do you want to see the corona? Corona is because that is when the mass ejection starts. When the sun erupts or sun burps, then the, the mass ejections come. And that is what it travels towards the interplanetary space, causing uh, space weather and the eruptions in our power grid, your communication, etc., etc. 